When building an assembly in SOLIDWORKS, it's important to constrain components in a particular way so they act like a mechanical system. To do this, we use a tool called MATES to create relationships between components, parts, or parts and the assembly. There are many types of MATES available to help constrain components, including the standard MATES subset. Standard MATES are any of the following types of MATES in SOLIDWORKS. They are the coincident MATE, parallel MATE, perpendicular mate, tangent mate, concentric mate, distance mate, angle mate, and a lock mate. In this lesson, we will use an assembly containing a block and a rivet to demonstrate each of these eight mate types and how they can be used to constrain the components. Keep in mind these files are created in SOLIDWORKS 2020, so you'll need 2020 or newer to follow along and use these files. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. Here we have an assembly with a block and a rivet. The block is fixed in place while the rivet is free to move around. We will use these two components to demonstrate the standard mate types available. Before beginning to add mates, let me first detail which selections can be made in order to add mates to these components. You can select two faces or surfaces, a line or a linear edge. You can select planes, an axis, or temporary axis, a point, a vertex, or a coordinate system. And finally, an arc or a circular edge. The selection entities determines which type of mates are available for the components. So choosing the correct entities is an important part of properly constraining the components. To begin constraining these two parts, we first need to activate the mate tool. The mates tool can be found in the assembly tab of the command manager under the Insert drop-down menu, or by pressing S on the keyboard to bring up your shortcut menu. Now the shortcut menu can be customized, so it should show there by default. If not, you may have to customize it to show. So the Mates tool has an icon of a paperclip. When you click on it, the Property Manager updates and a list of available options becomes available. There are four main tabs, the Standard tabs, the Advanced Mates, the Mechanical Mates, and the Analysis. This lesson will just focus on the settings found in the standard tab and leave all the other options in the other tabs to another video in the future. In the standard tab, the mate selection box displays which faces, planes, edges, or points are selected to mate together, along with a button to toggle multiple mate mode, which is used for more advanced mate scenarios, so it will be left as a topic for a future lesson. Below this is a section for the mate types, which are the mate options that we'll focus on in this lesson. Further down is another box called Mates, which displays the current mate that's being created and an options box with selections that help display and control mates. Leave all these options at the default settings and scroll back to the top to the standard mate selection. The first mate is the coincident mate. This mate constrains two components to have their faces, edges, or other selected entities remain coinciding with each other. This doesn't mean that the components will always remain in contact, but the selections will always coincide. To demonstrate this, click on the coincident mate to activate it. Select the top face of the block, and then rotate around so we see the underside of the rivet and click on the bottom face of the rivet. You should see that the rivet moves into place, so it is now coincident. You'll also notice a context toolbar appear with other available mates based on these selections. In this context menu, there are also buttons to flip the mate alignment, and to undo the selections. And finally, there is a green tick to complete the mate. If the parts orientate incorrectly when the entities are selected, use either the mate alignment buttons in the property manager or the flip mate alignment button in the context toolbar. When you complete a mate, the property manager stays open. This allows you to continue adding mates without having to reactivate the tool every time. If you have finished adding mates to your assembly, you can then click on the green check mark in the property manager to complete and finalize the mates tool. So if we now click on drag on the rivet, you can see that the part can freely move around, but the faces that we selected are always going to be coincident with each other. Also, whenever you add a mate, it will be added to the mates folder, which you can find in the property manager on the side. If you click on the small arrow to expand it, you'll see a list of the mates you have created. From here, you can edit or delete or make changes. So let's click on this coincident mate that we created. And in the menu that pops up, go to edit feature. So this is how you would edit an existing mate. 
So we want to change this to a different type of mate. So in our mate selections, we can right click, go to clear selections, and now we're free to start again. So let's now try the parallel mate by clicking on it to activate it. The parallel mate forces two selected entities to always remain parallel, such as faces, axes, or edges. With the parallel mate selected, click on the front face of the block and the top face of the rivet. The rivet will move in place and these two faces will now be parallel to each other. Click the green check to accept and then click the next green check to close the mates tool. So let's click and drag on this rivet so it's outside of our view a little bit and then click on the X in the view triad and you can see that these faces are always going to be parallel to each other. We right click and try and rotate the component. You can see it's still going to move and rotate slightly but only in a way that those two faces that we selected are still going to remain parallel to each other. Let's go back and edit the parallel feature, clear the selections, and the next one we will look at is the perpendicular mate. The perpendicular mate performs similar to the parallel mate, but with the exception that the selected entities are constrained to remain perpendicular instead of parallel. For our selections, let's choose the same two faces, so the front face of the block and the top face of the rivet, and this time it's with the perpendicular mate selected. So the rivet will move into place and it will now be constrained perpendicular, so click OK and OK again. So you can see these two faces are now going to be perpendicular to each other. The next standard mate type is the tangent mate. First let's delete the old mate we just created, so if we go to the mates folder, and I think you can and right click on it and go to delete for the perpendicular mate that we created. And then we may just need to move this one out a little bit just to create some room, see what we're doing. So the tangent mate constrains two selected entities to remain tangent to each other, such as two faces or a face and an edge. Before creating the tangent mate, first create a coincident mate between the bottom of the rivet and the front face of the block, as this will help demonstrate how the tangent mate works. This time I'll show you another way of creating mates, which is by making the selections first. So without the mate tool actually activated, let's select the cylindrical face of the rivet and holding down control and then select the top face of the block. And then you can let go of control. We can then go up to our mate tool and you can see the rivet move because it's going to use a tangent mate. So it knows based on our selections, it needs to create a tangent mate and our selections already input because we made those selections first. So the tangent mate was created just based on our selections because SolidWorks is smart enough to know what is the most useful mate type to use based on those selections that we make. So in this case, it knows because we have a cylindrical face and a flat plane, it's going to assume that a tangent mate needs to be created. And in some instances, that is going to be the only mate you can create. As you can see, these other selections are grayed out. So let's make sure our parts are properly aligned and we can use this button here. It's not going to matter too much, we're just going to have it sitting on top. If you sort of rotate around, you can see it's on the top here, and then click on the green check mark. So if we now drag this rivet around, we can see that it's going to always be in a tangent relation to the block. So click OK and expand your mates folder. You should see the tangent mate is still there. What we need to now look at is the concentric mate. So we're going to demonstrate this by editing the tangent mate. So we can click on that. So we can click on that and go to edit feature. So right click in this box and go to clear selections and click on concentric mate. So concentric should now be activated. And a concentric mate constrains two circular sections to share a common central axis. To help show this, we can turn on temporary axes for the components by clicking on this visibility icon and dropping it down. And in here you want to show view temporary axis. So if you click on that, you'll see that anything with a, an axis like a cylinder or a circle, semicircle, etc., is going to have a temporary axis. So that's just an axis through that point. And we can use this just to visually see the points a bit easier. So with our concentric mate selected, we want to click on the cylindrical face of the rivet and this cylindrical face of the block. And we can see the rivet has moved into position to now have a concentric relation between those two selections. 
You'll notice in the contextual menu, there's also an option for this particular mate called lock rotation. And you can also see it over here just under the concentric mate lock rotation. So what this is doing, if you enable it, is as we drag this around, the part is not actually going to be able to rotate. So you're kind of eliminating the need of an additional mate to lock that rotation into place. You can kind of combine two mates into one that way. So it's useful in particular when you're doing concentric mates to lock the rotation down as well and minimize further steps. Let's go back to our visibility options and just turn these temporary axis back off. So they should no longer be showing. And the next mates we're going to look at are the distance and angle mate types, which both require numerical inputs to define the mate. And then finally, we'll look at the lock mate type. The distance mate constrains two selected entities to remain a certain distance from each other, such as two faces or edges. Let's go back into our concentric and edit feature, and then right click in the dialog box and clear selections. So we're now ready to continue a new mate. The one we want to select is the distance mate. So you click on that to activate it. And you'll notice a numerical value is required for this as well as our selections. For our selections, pick the rivet shaft, the base of it, and then the top face of the block. You'll see that it should move into place. And currently it is set to 20 millimeters for the distance. So if we could change that to 100 millimeters, push enter, you'll notice it moves out. So it's always going to be uh, almost like a parallel co coincident mate, a parallel mate, but it's going to have a distance between those faces as well of what we specify, in this case, 100 millimeters. But you could make that anything, uh, 50 miles, etc. And you can also flip the direction of which way it is going. So in this case, it's going down 50 mils. If we untick that, it's going up 50 mils. You can also adjust the alignment by clicking on this one here, flip mate alignment, which is going to flip it around. So now it's almost as if we click the flip dimension, but the difference is it's actually orientating the part or the component in a different way as well. So if we click okay to that and click okay again to close, so we can see our components are both uh, free to move. Well, this the rivet is free to move, but if you look at it in a certain direction, say in this direction, it's always going to be 100, or in this case, sorry, 50 mils away from those two faces that we selected. The last standard mate type that forces alignment between parts is the angle mate type. This mate constrains two selected entities to maintain a specified angle between them, such as two faces or two edges. To demonstrate the angle mate type, first we need to suppress the coincident mate, which we can do by clicking on it in the feature manager tree and then going to suppress. So this way you can suppress mates so you don't have to delete them if you don't need to. You can just suppress them and therefore uh, this can now move around without that distance a constraint in place. So what we could do is now create a new mate by going back to our mate tool. And we're going to click the, or select the top face of the block and the bottom face of the rivet again. But this time we want the angle mate selected. And we're going to put in a value of 60 degrees, push enter. And you can see that the rivet is going to move out of position. So it's now 60 degrees of those two faces to each other. If the two components are intersecting when the angle mate is applied, we can use the mate alignment options in the property manager to properly align the parts as well as flip the dimension box around as well. So we can flip the dimensions, but we can also adjust the alignments. Notice in the mate selection group box, there's a selection window available to select a reference entity to help control the orientation of the angle mate. This can be a plane, planar face, a linear edge, or a reference axis. This reference entity must be perpendicular to both selected faces. There's also a button you can click to auto fill the reference entity. Clicking this button allows SolidWorks to automatically search for and select a reference entity. If we click this button, SolidWorks is going to put a little pop out notification showing it was unable to detect a reference entity. This is because the positions of the parts don't allow a reference entity to be perpendicular to both selected faces. 
So to continue, let's click on the green check to complete the angle mate. And then we're going to add a parallel mate between the front face of the block and the flat face of the top edge of the rivet. And this will just complete our assembly construction. So we can click OK and click OK again. So what I did with that parallel mate, and when you highlight a mate, you can also see what entities are selected. So we can see these are the two faces we selected with our parallel. So the parallel is going to help line up the two faces, whereas the angle mate is applying in this direction. Uh, so you have this kind of angle happening. And our distance mate was no longer required, uh, so we suppressed that, but we could actually just right click on it and delete as well if, we, if you really didn't need it anymore. So the final standard mate type to look at is the lock mate type. This mate restricts any movement between two parts, making them fixed in space relative to each other. To show you this mate, let's both delete these two mates that we created, the angle and parallel. So there's no mates, and it should be able to freely move around going to go back to our mate tool and we're going to select the lock mate type and for our mate selections we don't have to actually pick faces or edges or anything like that we're just picking components so we're going to click on the rivet and the block and these are our two selections we're going to click ok click ok again and now if you try and move this around it's not going to move it's going to have a little pop-up saying the selected component is fully defined it cannot be moved and the same is going to say for the block. This is because you've set a lock mate type. Now with lock mates, you don't use them too often. I personally haven't had a use for them at all. There probably is some cases where you would because it's kind of a cheating way. It's just going to lock everything in place where it is. So you can see our rivet is really undefined. It's just kind of floating in space, but we cannot move it because of that lock mate. So it's more practical to put in mates that have some sort of relation to each other, like the faces are parallel to each other, or they're a certain distance away from each other, uh, or they're coincident to each other. You want those type of mates, so you kind of build them in place, kind of like a Lego set, place them and you place them and you build this assembly through these constraints. And it's not often where you would just select two components and just lock them in place. I'm sure there is a use for it, but I haven't come across a use for it myself. But obviously it is there for a reason. Just don't depend on it, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. It would be very poor practice to go and open an assembly and everything is just locked in position and that's all there is. That would be a really bad assembly if I ever opened one like that. So this brings us to the end of the lesson for the various types of standard mates. There are more type of mates available, such as mechanical and other more advanced mate types, but this is just the basic standard mate types. When building assemblies in SOLIDWORKS, it is common practice to take components, bring it in, into the assembly, and then constrain them to each other using relations and mates to kind of build the overall assembly. And you can also bring in assemblies into another assembly and constrain those assemblies together. So when you're modeling in SOLIDWORKS, it's really this kind of layer approach on top of each other and constraining things and then building that relation between them. And because it's such a vital part, I recommend you sort of get familiar, at least with the standard mates, because you'll often just use them the most, um, but then start to explore the other mate types like the mechanical types and such. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson and have learned something. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next lesson.